Since Ukraine began using American-made M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles on the front lines, the Russians have captured at least five of them. And now, Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the Russians are using at least one of those captured Bradleys on the Eastern Front. One video circulating on social media shows a modified M2 Bradley with an anti-drone net on top. It is in service with the Russian Army's 30th Motorized Rifle Brigade, which is currently advancing through Selidovo on Pokrovsk. The Russians captured relatively intact Bradleys as well as wrecked Bradleys that could serve as a source of spare parts. Given the broad incompatibility of BAE systems, M2s with Russian-built vehicles cannibalizing parts is the only way the Russians can salvage their captured Bradleys. Axe writes, how the Russians plan to arm their captured Bradley is unclear. The M2 is equipped with a 25mm autocannon and a launcher for TOW anti-tank missiles, but whether the invaders have enough 25mm rounds and tow missiles is unknown. At the same time, the Bradley, even without weapons, is a very valuable acquisition for the Russian army. The analyst notes, unlike Russian infantry fighting vehicles with their thin armor, the M2 is highly durable. A Bradley can be hit, but the crew will survive, said Ukrainian army lieutenant Nikolai Melnik. At the same time, if a Russian BMP2 is hit, Melnik says, the entire crew will die. The Ukrainian army's 47th mechanized brigade, one of two units riding in the hundreds of surplus M2s the administration of US President Joe Biden has donated to Ukraine, fought in Selidov before taking a short break from the front line ahead of its redeployment to Kursk Oblast in western Russia last month. While in Selidov, the 47th Mechanized Brigade, which also operates all of Ukraine's American-made M1 Abrams tanks, lost several M2s. The advancing Russians captured relatively intact Bradleys as well as wrecked Bradleys that could function as sources of spare parts. Given the broad incompatibility of the BAE systems built M2 with Russian-made vehicles, cannibalization of parts is the only way the Russians will be able to maintain their captured Bradleys. The Ukrainian General Staff has deployed its best and best equipped brigades in the Kursk region. This contrasts with the use of weak and exhausted brigades that are constantly forced to retreat in the Don base, writes the Spanish newspaper El Pais. In Sumy region, there is such intense artillery fire, aircraft flights and armored vehicle movement that it is strange compared to Ukraine's weak position in the hot spots of Donbass. The military interviewed in late October in this region insist that if they need anything, it is more weapons. They are clearly better in numbers than their brigades, which are retreating in the south of Donetsk region, the publication says. No one complains about the lack of soldiers in the Kursk operation, the rotation of fighters occurs every 10 days, and in the beginning it was even every 3 days, says a Ukrainian fighter. At the same time in Donbass, in particular in the Kurakovo region, the average time spent by infantry on the front line is 25 days, representatives of four different brigades told the newspaper. In the battles in Kursk region, Ukrainian troops even go on the offensive and sometimes make new territorial gains, which is unthinkable on the front inside Ukraine, the authors of the publication add. It is in Kursk that mechanized and armored regiments equipped with Western equipment are fighting. Thus, the 47th Mechanized Brigade, 
which is fully equipped with NATO weapons and has well-trained personnel, is fighting here on American Abrams tanks and Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, which directly attack Russian positions. The invasion of the Kursk region is a personal bet for President Volodymyr Zelensky, and not only his political fate, but also the fate of the country depends on the success of the operation. Demonstrating to Russia that it is vulnerable and that its territory is also under threat is one of the five points of the victory plan, L. Pace notes. At the same time, the newspaper notes that not everyone in Ukraine understands the need to conduct the Kursk operation at a time when Ukrainian troops are forced to retreat in Donbass. Perhaps our leaders have some big secret plan, otherwise I don't understand why our best brigades are in Kursk region, while our defense in Ukraine is falling apart, the newspaper quotes Ukrainian General Dmitry Marchenko, who recently announced his dismissal from the army. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin is rushing to return the territory of the Kursk region to Russian control before the inauguration of the new U.S. President Donald Trump on January the 20th, 2025. The Telegraph writes about this. It is noted that for this purpose, the Russian command deployed 50,000 troops, Russian and North Korean, in Kursk region. NATO allies believe Putin hopes to retake the territories seized by Ukraine before Trump's inauguration on January the 20th, the article says. Moscow is likely to increase the number of kamikaze drone attacks on Ukrainian positions in the coming days, according to British military intelligence seen by the Telegraph. The enemy may use new launch sites near the border. Some 12,000 North Korean troops that Kim Jong-un has sent to support Moscow's war efforts are also likely to be involved in the fighting in the Kursk region under a mutual military assistance pact between Russia and North Korea signed this year. Ukrainian analysts believe that the Kremlin may also seek to use its largest counter-offensive in the Kursk region to gain momentum and advance further into the Sumy region. The publication notes that Russia has already recaptured about half of the territory seized by Ukraine in its daring invasion of Kursk in August. Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sirsky said that Ukrainian positions were being attacked by tens of thousands of enemy soldiers from the best Russian strike units. Western diplomats are concerned that Putin will try to quickly seize territory before Trump's inauguration to give Russia more bargaining power in any peace talks. The Telegraph concludes, during the presidential election campaign, Trump said he would end the war in a day. Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, has cautiously welcomed Trump's election victory but called on him to maintain military support in the coming months. Their call after the result included Elon Musk, whose Starlink technology has been used by Ukrainian forces to direct drones towards Russian targets. Since the counter-offensive in Kursk, Russia has intensified frontline attacks, swarming Ukrainian oppositions with mass infantry assaults. Ukrainian forces are suffering from a shortage in manpower and weapon supplies.